his neck before. And he claims I gave it to him when I know in my right mind I never gave him no hickey at all. When Fantasia and Wendell met three years ago, they thought their love would last a lifetime, but things have changed. And even though Fantasia is six months pregnant with Wendell's baby, these two are wondering if their love can really last. She's a flirt. It's beautiful. Yeah. We'll be talking to, you know, a gentleman or two. And I'm like, what's going on? Oh, she tried to introduce me to the dude. I don't want to be homeboy. I ain't do none of that. Can this relationship be saved for the sake of their unborn child? Or has the freshness date on Fantasia and Wendell's relationship expired? Today on Divorce Court Before Your Vows. Come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Fantasia Buford and Wendell Glenn. Ms. Buford and Mr. Glenn, you two want to get married. You two have gone to the state of New York, gotten a marriage license. You know this bad boy expires on Monday, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you do. <laughs> and, but you're here because you're not quite sure this marriage is going to work out, and you wanted me to give you my opinion on whether or not marriage is a good thing. I had you fill out your compatibility test, and uh, I've gotten some information, but I'm going to start with you, Ms. Buford. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why you're not quite sure marriage is the thing to do. Well, Your Honor, um, as of now, I'm six months pregnant with Wendell's child. Mm -hmm. um, and Wendell basically needs to step up and be a man. One of my problems with Wendell is, is that he wants to have sex just about every day. Um, right? <laughs> Mr. Glenn, Mr. Glenn, now we're not going to get along if you're going to pop off like that. I'm just going to tell you right now. <laughs> So let's just 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 pull it in, Ms. Buford. Um, he wants to have sex every day, and you know, due to me being pregnant, I my hormones, my mood changes, and everything, and I don't want to do it all the time. Mm -hmm. He catches the attitude as soon as I sit there. No, I don't want to. Oh my God, this that and that. Like he's just a big baby when it comes down to it. Mr. Glenn, is that true that you don't get it often enough, and you're a little cranky about it? Well, yes, Your Honor. Yes, that's that's the rap. That's the rap. That's the rap. That's the rap. Do, do you understand that you know, things are a little different for her now? I no. mean, I thought it was supposed to be better. Like, who I told you that? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> that? That's what I heard through the grapevine. I mean, right. I'm, you know, let me tell you about the grapevine. People have their <laughs> own grapevines. And guys have grapevines that, that, that assist them in getting that what they want. Women have grapevines uh, vines that assist them in getting what they want. The grapevine is not a place to go. You got Google, you got the internet, you got Bing. <laughs> go there first. Or just, you know, ask the woman that you're talking to. Right, right. And she'll tell you how she feels. He said he don't care. <laughs> he don't Why don't care. you tell me, you say you have some concerns about trust and that you believe that he's cheating? Yes. Tell me about that. Okay, as far as in with him cheating, that is one of our biggest issues. He loves to text other females. He loves to meet other females. He loves to go on dating websites. Um, I caught Wendell with a hickey on his neck before, mm -hmm. and he claims I gave it to him when I know in my right mind I never gave him no hickey at all. So later on that night, yeah, he fell asleep. I went through his phone, okay. Um, I found text messages with him and another female. So I called her, hello, mm -hmm. who's this? And basically gave the whole 21 questions. Well, the 2,000 questions that I basically gave her. And me and her made a date to meet up with each other and everything. And we spoke. She didn't know that he had a child on the way. She didn't know that he had a family. He was in a relationship. He lied about his name to her and everything. So just right there, that just made her just tell it all. So she told me how they went to a hotel together before, had a few drinks with each other. She gave me the exact spot. She gave the hickey to him and everything. I come home and question him. He, oh, she's lying. She just want to break us up. Oh, you know you gave me that hickey. You're lying. Mr. Glenn, 
I not. Come well, on, you got busted. Well, you know well, that. All the well, way. It was <laughs> the proof was all well, the way in a pudding. She gave you me don't that think hickey. that's true. You that's think not you, true. She didn't meet up with a woman who you were texting. Woman, I don't know what woman she talking about. She must have. That must have been somebody. She must have dreamed. But it wasn't you. I was dreaming. Huh? It wasn't you. No, it wasn't me. Somebody else. I don't know what she talking about. And she always that's giving me hickeys. That's response all the time. She always giving me hickeys. You understand what I'm saying? She, every time I turn around, I got a hickey on me. My my cheek, my left cheek. They don't. She give me so many hickeys that they don't go away. You understand yeah, what I'm saying? That's the only so place I give it him. It's it, on his face because I do it on purpose at times because of the things that he do. Sometimes I will give him hickeys on his cheeks on purpose. So and you're like branding him yes. so that other right. women know <laughs> exactly it'll that be on his taken. face because he can sit there and disguise his neck. Anybody can disguise their neck. Even like when, say for example, if he don't shave, his hair grows or whatever, and it can be non-visible. So I'll give it to him on his face. I'm not, I don't give him hickeys on his neck. Is that the only time that that you believe he cheated on you when you you found this message from a woman and met with her? No, he's all over dating websites, all over. I want to put it past if he on Christian Mingle and he's not even a Christian. <laughs> first of all, <laughs> <laughs> first of all, you know, sometimes when we have a little arguments or whatever, I leave the house and I go to my friend's apartment. Now, they don't have a phone. He don't have a phone over there. So he asked me to, to use your phone. Right, to use my phone, right? So. I guess he don't know how to work the phone, so I show him how to do it. Right. And then he'll go on on a website and try to find him a nice lady or what have you. Let and me tell I, you how much I, I want to log out of it. So when I come home, not trying to hide nothing. What I'm hiding something for? If I was hiding something, I, I'd erase everything before I get in the house. When divorce court before your vows continues, is Wendell too controlling? He thinks we are back in the days where the woman walks two feet behind me. You do what the man say because I said so. Considering getting married but aren't quite sure your intended is the right one for you, I'll give you my opinion. Call toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court Before Your Vows is back with the case of Fantasia Buford who's six months pregnant and debating whether to marry her fiance because she thinks he's cheating. But is cheating the only problem in this relationship? He is lazy. It, he will go a week without doing anything. Ms. Buford, why don't you tell me, you say that he's bossy and you're concerned about the fact that he is so controlling. He thinks we are back in 100 BC or back in the days where if the woman walks two feet behind me. You do as the woman. You do as the man say. If I say cook, clean, wash, whatever, you are to do it because I said so. It no, it doesn't go Give like that. Give me some examples of that. Okay, in relationships, it's 50-50. Mm -hmm. If you clean, I cook. If I'm doing housework, you help with the baby. Mm -hmm. Um, he'll sit there and won't do nothing at all. He'll just sit down with the remote in his hand barking orders as if I'm supposed to jump and do it. None of that is true. I don't know. Don't please don't believe that. Anyway, she comes in the house and I asked her, baby, can you do me a favor? Can you make something to eat? Oh, when I get a chance, I'll do it. All right, cool. Then she'll go two minutes later and say, Wendell, can you do me a favor? Go pick up the baby. So I'd be like, okay, well, you know, start cooking. So by the time I come back in the house from getting the baby, you know, the food will be done. All three of us could sit down and watch some TV together. I don't think nothing's wrong with that. She complains about everything. So you think you just make reasonable requests for both of you to get involved in the care of the household, but she gets upset about it for Thinking no reason. that I'm trying to make her do it. Right. And I don't do anything. And that I, you don't do anything. Right. I clean a room. I clean upstairs, downstairs. I clean a bathroom. Does he clean? No. He used to. Don't get me wrong. He used to. But it seems like since I've gotten pregnant, he's just... Lazy. I thought I was supposed to be the one I was supposed to be lazy, not moving around and doing everything. But he is lazy. It, he will go a week without doing anything and then expect me to sit here and go cook and do everything for him. You not doing nothing for him, not going to okay. do nothing. I got you, Ms. Buford, and we've spent a lot of time talking about Mr. Glenn. Mr. Glenn, I want you to tell me what concerns you about Ms. Buford. Oh, yeah, let's get this started. Well, <laughs> she's a flirt, for one. Okay. Okay, now... Sometimes I'll come out the building and Miss Buford here. 
will be talking to, you know, a gentleman or two with her friends surrounding her, whatever the case may be. And I know she see me walking from a mile away. She might not even see me, but her friend will tell her, oh, he coming, he coming, he coming. I see him whispering, but she'll take a step back from the crowd, you know, to make it seem like she's not doing nothing. But I'm on her already. I'm on her like a cheap suit. I get up on her, and I'm like, what's going on? Oh, she tried to introduce me to the dude. I don't want to meet homeboy. I ain't, I ain't with none of that. It was a female she judge. She had her glasses on that day. And he got so upset because of the fact that he wasn't getting his attention uh -huh. like he always wants. He's an attention seeker. He wants attention 24-7. So if I'm giving somebody else my attention as far as in conversation, he's got to jump he in. Got, to jump in got it, got it. I, I, I see what the problems are. In fact, I already knew what the problems were because I took a look at your compatibility test, and I want to talk about that for a little while because I thought it was very interesting. You wrote the word respect on your compatibility test seven times seven times i don't think you're getting any i don't think you feel respected because you don't keep hollering for water if you're not thirsty and it bothers me that you don't feel respected because this paper screamed no respect that's very very deep next thing i saw was in I put a chore chart on there about the cooking and cleaning and bill paying and babies and this and that. She went down, everything should be 50-50. You went down, it's like, you sh she should do it all. <laughs> I told you. Except for the bill paying and you don't have a job. <laughs> well, Your Honor, I had a job. I got laid off, the economy's messed up. He but still wouldn't help when he was working. When I was working, she asked me for anything, I gave it to her. But, but, but now that you're not working, you help her out of the house, right? Correct, no. I do what I can. Fantasia's the type that if you if you're getting some money if i'm making my money uh-huh she want it all she wanted she wants to expect me to pay the bills cook buy the kids clothes buy her clothes Outrageous. what about me what about me <laughs> paying the bills and buying the kids clothes i mean see, when it comes to and see, when I it mean, comes down how arrogant could you be by myself. See, when it comes it's insane <laughs> when divorce court before your vows continues has fantasia been Mr. Glenn, have you ever caught her cheating on you? Is there a reason why you're so suspicious? Do you believe Wendell is cheating? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call 1-800-282-1991 now. The case of Wendell Glenn, who is having second thoughts about marrying his fiance because he says she is a flirt. But has Fantasia taken her flirting a step too far? My boys is telling me, like, yo, yo, you know, Shawnee? Yeah, uh, uh, she dealing with so and so. I'm like, what? I asked both of you, what are the five things that you dislike about each other? Of course, you said you feel disrespected. Constant theme. You said. You want to know what he said about you? He don't okay. like your attitude. He don't like how you think. He doesn't like the way you treat me, that you lie, and you're sneaky. That, he's so paranoid. It's like, all right, because we live around where I grew up at. Uh -huh. So his thing is, it can be my brother that I can be standing there talking to, and he will swear to God that I am flirting with him. Try, like, any, it, it doesn't matter who I'm talking to. But let me ask you, Mr. Glenn, to. have you ever caught her? cheating on you is Never. there a reason why you're so suspicious because he's the cheater miss miss buford i'm so I, sorry i'm suspicious because okay living in the area that she grew up in rather right a lot of guys around here she's been known for a long time so you know my boys is telling me like yo yo you know shorty yeah uh, uh, uh. she dealing with so-and-so i'm like what, I'm like, what? <laughs> talking about her fantasia so my thing is this you know the guy code is this, you know, you know, you, if you add, if you, if I tell you something, you don't tell nobody. I can't help myself. You know what I'm saying? She's my woman. I want her to be my wife. Now, you know, when I see her accent, first thing she tell me is, oh, them dudes is lying. 
they lying. I don't know what they talking about, and you were fool for believing them. And I'm like, well, why would they lie to me? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's crazy. I don't understand it. And she's sneaky. She's very sneaky. How is she sneaky? She's very sneaky. Okay. Okay, here we go. Now, for one, one time she was going out. She was with her friends or whatever, and I asked her, where you going? She told me, yeah, well, I'm just going to hang out for a few minutes. I'm going to my friend's house. I heard she was at some type of club partying with her friends, and it was guys there. She had like a, a black whatever that thing is. She looked like she belonged in a strip club. She had a black whatever like, that like thing whatever is. Like whatever. I don't even know what it was. It was thing? leather. It was leather, and her skin was mm -hmm. out. It was crazy. Do, he, no. do you know what Can he's I, talking about? Uh, yes, I do. This right here that he's talking about is something that was about five years ago or something like that. See, the thing with him is he can't get past the fact that as me growing up, I was a tomboy. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't really start doing the whole girly thing until after like 2007, after I graduated. So it was like I was strictly into boxing and I knew a lot of guys because I was boxing and I was just a tomboy. You were boxing? That, yes. I was boxing for about 12, 13 years. No kidding. So, yes. That's so interesting. He, so he feels like, oh, because of the fact that I know guys and everything is, oh, you just deal with guys all the time. You're always in a man's face, this, that, and the third. I got you. I got you. When divorce court before your vows continues, can Wendell prove a judge wrong? You know, when I read your compatibility test, Mr. Glenn, I got a whiff of jerk. and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call 1-800-282-1991 now. Divorce Court Before Your Vows returns with the case of Fantasia Buford and Wendell Glenn, who have come before Judge Lynn to ask whether or not they are ready to get married. You know, when I read your compatibility test, Mr. Glenn, I got a whiff of jerk. Just a little, ooh, <laughs> of jerk. Your answers were curt. You weren't really interested. You know, when you said, what's wrong with you, you said, I eat a lot, my attitudes, I smoke cigarettes. There was no insight. There was no, I'm, I'm, I'm not nice or I'm, I'm short-tempered or anything. It was just a bunch of silly yeah, stuff. I'm a, good, I'm a good guy to her. No, no, everybody's got something wrong with them. Here's the thing. I don't think you're a big as jerk as this piece of paper would indicate. I don't think you're a big a jerk as you appear here today. I think you're probably a whole lot nicer guy that you presented, because you're working really hard to tell stories about her that just aren't true. And you know they're not true. There's no near real oh, fear there. You know she loves you. You know all of that. She does. You just think you're the man. Mm -hmm. Now let me say this to Miss Buford. You lost a lot of your power when you got pregnant. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I want you to feel like you've lost the ability to be a bit of a jerk because she's pregnant. I want you to treat your wife or your woman or the mother of your child like you would want someone to treat your daughter. <laughs> and if you can do that, then whomever she is carrying will grow up in a stable, good household. Can you ask him how many times a day I say that? Them same exact words. That's have you, have, have like you heard that. that before? I hear that all the time. Thank you. Does, do, doesn't that say something to you? Doesn't that, doesn't that say, hmm, that's something I need to consider? Yes, it does. And that's what I want you to do. And I think you should let this bad boy expire. I really do. Uh, I want you to stay together because I want this child to have a family, but I want you to be a better man. I'm just asking. You have the capacity to do it, I know you do. Put all your efforts, and when you're looking around and seeing who she's talking to, skip that and go get a job. <laughs> you working hard out there making money, you won't have time to worry about who she's talking to. She ain't talking to anybody, she's six months pregnant. And if she's tired, leave her alone. Pregnant. You know, get better. Get him on child support. Oh, oh God. Then if you act right, get married. Yes, ma'am. This matter is adjourned. All right. Party's ready for it. Fantasia and Wendell still are living together and working on their relationship. They hope to get to know each other a lot better and to work on the issues they discussed on the show. Fantasia.
just says that since they left him.